Hello, my name is Leah. I love reading a good craft book and I'm always looking for new recommendations. And so today I thought that I would sit down and share with you a bit about five of the craft books that I have read just in case you were looking to check any of these out. I'll be giving my thoughts on each, who I think they're most valuable for, and kind of a summary of what sort of content is available within each of these books. So we will start with probably one of the most well-known craft books out there, at least in terms of author tube, and that is Save the Cat Writes a Novel by Jessica Brody. I wanted to start with this one not only because I know a lot of people know about it, but because in my opinion, if you were to read any one book out of this list, it would be Save the Cat Writes a Novel. Well, with some caveats, but I will get to that at the end. For those of you who don't know, Save the Cat was originally a book by Blake Snyder, which talked about screenwriting, and so that's where the Save the Cat beats originally come from. Jessica Brody has adapted it to be for novel writing, because while the beats translate really well, because the beats are really more about story than the form, there are some differences in what you need to be aware of when you're writing a book. It has a really great guide on, like, percentages of where in the novel these beats should be landing approximately which can translate really well into the wide array of different length of novels that there are. So obviously the main feature of this book is the Save the Cat beat sheet, although that chapter where it's discussed really only takes up a little bit, bit of the book. The rest of it is kind of spent giving examples and discussing how those beats are applied within different genres and stuff like that. One thing I really appreciate is that the first chapter is actually about building a story-worthy hero, which I enjoy because in my opinion character and character growth is really what drives a story forward because it's kind of what gives meaning to the plot, again, in my opinion. So it is nice to start out with your hero in mind and then crafting the story kind of around that, or all of the elements kind of come together and feed into each other. Anyways, this book definitely places a huge emphasis on structure and plot, so if that specifically is something that you are looking to dive into, I definitely recommend this one. It's not super, super in-depth on character creation and character arcs or building a setting or anything like that. It's kind of just specifically about structure. There are a ton of examples of how the beat sheet is applied to different genres, which I found really helpful. It's one thing to talk about some concepts abstractly, and it's another thing to be able to give an example and see why and how that thing works when implemented in a particular way. And then at the end, she goes over briefly pitching and making a synopsis and stuff like that. And also in the last chapter, it kind of goes over some common problems that writers might face, like, how do I begin? Or, I have an unlikable character, how do I make this story engaging? That sort of thing, which I found very practical, and she has some really good practical advice in the end there too. I read this book a few months ago, so it is pretty fresh in my mind still. Um, it's definitely one that I'm going to continue to reread over and over again across the years. I use the beat sheet for pretty much any story that I create, not necessarily rigidly, because I'm familiar enough with it by now that it kind of naturally finds its way into my writing anyways, but it's something that I find very helpful to go back and reference whenever I'm outlining or maybe restructuring my plot because things aren't working. I find it very helpful to go back and read about the different beats and kind of try and figure out why stuff isn't working. So overall, definitely recommend Save the Cat. I'm not going to be rating these like X out of five stars because I kind of, I pretty much would rate all of them five stars because I've gotten useful things out of all of these books that I'm going to talk about today. But instead, I'll say what it's best useful for and who I recommend it for. So Save the Cat, as I said, is I think the most useful if you're looking to learn more about plot and structure. With the framework of it being based around character growth, but the book itself isn't about how to make that character growth. I mean, it's kind of involved in the plot, but it's not the emphasis. I definitely think that this is something that's really useful and easily accessible for beginners as well. So if you're just beginning to delve into the world of storytelling and the craft of that, then this is definitely a good resource to check out. But in addition to that, I think this is really helpful for intermediates and experts as well. Not necessarily because any of the information inside of it would be new, but just because, at least for me, whenever I read any craft book, whether I know the information in it or not, it always gets my head turning and it always gives me ideas for how to make my works in progress better. And there might be a few nuggets of information in here that you maybe didn't think of, or it gives another perspective on how to think about story. So definitely recommend for anyone. The next book on my list is my most recent 
craft book read, and that is On Writing and World Building by Timothy Hickson. I really enjoyed reading this book. I had a great time with it, and of course, I definitely learned a lot. Essentially, this book is a collection of some of the videos that he has made on his channel, Hello Future Me, specifically about writing, and there's a lot, a ton, a ton of information about world building in here as well. He's made some changes to some of the content, but has mainly adapted it for book form. So for example, he has pretty much all the topics that he covers listed on the back. We've got prologues, how to begin, dealing with exposition, foreshadowing, villain motivation, lots of stuff on writing, and then a lot of stuff about magic systems and religions and building empires on the world side of things. The examples that he uses and the way that he goes about discussing these things about writing and world building definitely are geared toward fantasy writers. Pretty much all of the examples that he uses are fantasy and sci-fi stories. He uses a mix of shows and movies and books, which again, I find referencing tons of examples always very helpful to me because it kind of puts a picture to whatever concept we're talking about. But because this sort of is a collection of some videos that already kind of touch on some of these topics, I definitely recommend checking out his channel first because you'll kind of see his style and the way he likes to talk about these things. I find it very fun and entertaining. I find that I have so much trouble finding good resources about world building because it's sort of something that it's, it's important in any story, of course. You want to set up your story world to best reflect the characters and the plot, and all of those things work together to create the story. But specifically in fantasy, when you're having to create entire political systems and magic systems and economics and societies, it gets very overwhelming very quickly. And because it's such an expansive topic, I feel like it's hard to cover it as a whole because there's so many like niche things about it, if that makes sense. So I definitely recommend this and his channel specifically for world building. There's a ton of stuff on the craft of writing as well. He does talk a lot about character motivation and character driven stories. I definitely think this is another one that anyone at any level of experience can jump into. Um, some of his topics do dive pretty deep. Others are a little bit more like 101 style. So either way, beginner, expert, definitely go check out his channel and watch some of his videos and see if you like the kind of stuff that would be in this book because the videos are really a very accurate representation of the stuff that he teaches in this book. The next writing book I have to talk about is one of a similar title, and that is On Writing by Stephen King. So this book is part memoir and part craft book. Let's see, where does the craft part begin? This first part is the memoir, this second part is the craft section of the book, so it's really about 50-50, with maybe slightly more on the craft side of things. I read this book I think about two years ago, I really enjoyed it. This one definitely isn't a recommendation if you're looking for something that goes super in depth into any craft elements. Um, just because since it is half memoir, you really don't get a ton of content on craft. But what I really did like about this book was getting to learn about Stephen King's life and see how the things impacted his life until he was the prolific writer that we know him as today. I love hearing about other authors' stories because no one gets into publishing in the same way, and so it's so much fun to just hear about other people's paths, in my opinion. Um, but what does make the craft section special about this book is that because we start with the memoir, the craft section f does feel very personal. Essentially, he takes you through the process of writing a novel, from idea to finishing the book, and he covers some of the different story elements, like dialogue and incorporating a theme and what makes stories engaging, that sort of thing. He gives some examples of his own work and how things changed from first draft to revision or first draft to final draft, which his first drafts are so good. Like, it was really interesting learning about his process because he writes very clean first drafts, which ain't me. So in that sense, the revision part wasn't very helpful for me because Basically, all he's doing is editing, like, grammar and sentence flow, and I'm sitting here rearranging scenes and coming up with different plot threads to add in. It's, yeah. <laughs> but I'm sure part of that just comes with years upon years upon years of experience. I definitely don't have that. Either way, though, 
very interesting to me to see his story and see his process. But yeah, I don't think the craft portion is meant to be a super in-depth discussion about it. It's just sort of a way for him to share his own process and the way that he does things. To me, what was most valuable about this book was getting to see a real life author's journey and how they go about the business of writing. I definitely would recommend for beginners, just don't let his first draft examples at the end intimidate you because I can promise you that your first drafts will get better the more you write as well. And definitely recommend to anyone who just wants to learn more about different authors and learn more about different people's process. If you're wanting a book that goes super in-depth about the craft, this probably isn't the book for you then. The next book on my list is Bird by Bird by Anne Lamott. I loved reading this book. It was such a joy. Anne Lamott tells a story at the beginning kind of explaining the title Bird by Bird. Essentially when she was young she had a school project that she had procrastinated on, relatable. It was some sort of project where she had to write reports on different birds or something like that. But it's like the night before it's due, she's freaking out, but her dad just sits her down and says, we just have to do it bird by bird. And that is sort of the theme of the book. She likens that to the process of writing a novel, which is a huge undertaking. The length of a draft in the first place is already so huge, but then you have to do revisions of that draft. And it's just a process that takes a lot of time and a lot of effort. And so she says, take it bird by bird, word by word, scene by scene, chapter by chapter until the book is done. There are four main sections within this book. The first is talking about the craft of writing. She talks about the different elements like character and plot and dialogue and all that sort of stuff and also talks about letting yourself write a just absolutely terrible first draft and by starting short. Maybe you write lots of short stories to get into the habit and get familiar with the craft of writing before you tackle a whole novel. I found her advice very useful. She tells a lot of stories about her own journey and her own path as a writer, which again, I always love hearing about. She has a very fun, uh, no BS tone to her writing, which again, made what could be a boring craft book be lots of fun to read. The second part is about the writing frame of mind, how you need to be thinking about yourself and your writing. She deals with the jealousy that comes from being a writer and comparing your own work to others published works or just others process and how things might seem like it's going easier for other people than you, which I really appreciated um, because those are things that are important to be keeping in mind as a writer and as you go about trying to write a book or trying to get published, whatever it is you're doing. The third part is about bringing others into your process in different ways, which again is something I really appreciated her touching on. It's about the importance of giving your work to other people for feedback. It's about leaning on other people whenever you need them in your life and to give you strength throughout the process. It's about getting involved in a writer's group and using that as motivation for your writing. Again, all very helpful things that aren't really talked about a lot, especially in craft books. And then the fourth part is called public publication and other reasons to write. It's a pretty short section so it's not like going in depth about the process of publication or anything like that but these chapters are kind of talking about finding your reason and your motivation to write whether that's publication or other things or publication and other things. It's that passion that's going to drive you to do the crazy amount of work that it takes to finish a novel and those are the things that are going to be important to keep in mind as you go through the process. Overall again I think this is a really great book both for beginners and for experts. I don't think it goes super in-depth on any one craft element, but it does have a lot of useful tidbits and information. What I really enjoyed about this book is the things that it discussed outside of the craft, because those things you can get on the internet, you can get in other books, but this is one of the only um, craft books that I've read that really talks about the other things that are involved in being a writer. It's been a while since I've read this one, but I know I definitely want to reread it again at some point. And then the last book on this review video is The Anatomy of Story by John Truby. This book, y'all, changed my whole perspective on storytelling and plot and basically just everything. I freaking love this book so much. The, and the reason for that is 
because it goes so in depth on basically everything to do with storytelling from character design and creation through their arcs, how that ties in with plot, what plot structure is, how that serves character, how characters should tie into one another, how the story world ties into the plot and the character. It's it's very good. What I absolutely love about this book is his emphasis on the why. This book isn't about what story structure is. It's not about what makes a character engaging. It's not about what things to consider when crafting your world. It's about why these particular elements of story structure work. It's about why you need to give your character a want and a need and a desire. It's about why the world is important to the overarching story. It's about why and how these characters whether main character, antagonist, or side character are all coming together to create this character web which all feeds into whatever your main theme is. And it's that emphasis on the why that really made story structure click for me. This was not the first craft book I had read. I had read others before. In school I was taking screenwriting classes and so I had read books, I had taken classes on writing, but this book is what really drove home to me why all of these things matter and why they work. Clearly I highly recommend this book, but I would recommend it more for intermediates and experts than I would for beginners. I think that you get the most out of this book whenever you have some sort of knowledge about storytelling before going into it because it kind of frees up your mind to learn about the why rather than the what. So I definitely recommend sort of dipping your toes into the what before you get into this book. It's not that it's super hard to understand because it's really not. Like it's it's pretty straightforward and John Truby does a really great job of explaining what he means. It's just that I think if this is your first exposure to say how to create a character. I think that you'll be underserved by this because your brain space is going to be taken up learning about how this all works in the first place and you won't be able to absorb why it works as well, if that makes sense. Definitely do whatever you want though. I'm not about to gatekeep this book for you. But even just reading like Save the Cat before you jump into this will at least give some context for um, some of the things that he discusses. There's another sort of structure sheet that is um, in this. It's the 22 steps to becoming a master storyteller. I don't know why that's phrased that way, but it's basically 22 story beats to hit throughout the story. And so it kind of breaks it down a step further than Save the Cat does even though a lot of the form of those steps are pretty much the same. John Truby specifically has a lot of experience in screenwriting, but this definitely applies to any type of story. And he says in there that the 22 steps really just depend on what story you're telling, on what you include, because they can be pared down to like seven core steps, I think he has, or they can be expanded out into a long form novel as well. So again, definitely recommend. One of my favorite resources, I've had this and Save the Cat on my desk while I was re-outlining for my novel revisions, just because they both have a ton of resources about story structure. And this one also has a ton of resources about how to create characters and their motivations as well. But those are the five writing books that I was going to be discussing today. Again, I've loved each and every one of these for different reasons and I hope that my explanations uh, kind of got that across. If you have any questions about any of these and want to learn more, feel free to comment. I would love to have a discussion with you. I just, I love craft books. They're so much fun to me. And if you have any other craft book recommendations, feel free to leave those below. These aren't the only ones that I've read, but I thought that keeping it down to five would make for a good video. I'll probably make another video like this with other books that I've read in the future. That is all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye.